All right, beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and get started then. So this class is all about pen testing with Linux distributions. Uh, we did have the class named something else originally, but uh, there are some wonderful attorneys out there who decided that our class was too good and uh, asked us to rename it. So now it's pen testing with Linux distributions. Let's go ahead and uh, start digging in on that uh, by uh, starting the discussion on what a pen testing distribution is. So there are a number of pen testing distributions. These are effectively uh, Linux images. They come in a variety of formats. You can get them in a ISO. You can get them as a uh, pre-built virtual machine. The concept here is to have a pre-built environment uh, based on the, uh, the Linux kernel that has a number of tools already in place for you to perform penetration testing with. Now, there are a number of examples out there. Uh, STD, uh, NST, uh, what was formerly known as Backtrack and is now known as Kali. Uh, that would be the, dis the distribution that uh, you're using as part of this class. Uh, Backbox, uh, Pintu, uh, Samurai WTF. Uh, for any of you who are paying attention, that's web testing framework. Um, a lot of distributions. This is just a, a small fragment of them. And uh, they all have uh, a, a various number of tools. They have uh, different focuses. Uh, for example, with uh, Samurai, it's more focused on performing uh, web-based uh, penetration testing, so dealing with uh, web applications. Uh, Kali uh, is uh, more broad in its scope. It deals with web applications. It deals with uh, uh, all facets of the uh, pen testing methodology, which we'll uh, talk about here a little bit later. Um, e each one has a, a different focus. Each one has a uh, different underlying architecture, and uh, each one is designed a little bit differently. So as, as you perform penetration testing, as you work with these uh, distributions, you'll find some that fit your needs for some purposes better than others. I've seen uh, some distributions uh, where it actually includes another distribution inside of it. Uh, in cases like that, uh, they, they try to make it the, uh, the best of both worlds, where uh, you have a, a variety of options even within a, a single image. So that, that's uh, just some examples of what pen testing dis distributions are out there right now. Um, I've missed dozens of them. This is just a, a small fragment. But uh, the, the point is there are a lot of them out there, and uh, they, they all have a, a very specific focus, and a, uh, they tend to be very good at what they do. So let's talk a little bit about what the point of a pen testing distribution is. The point of a, a pen testing distribution is to be your toolbox. It's intended to be a, a collection of your tools. It's in, in, intended to be a place to store your tools. So when you think about a, a traditional toolbox, what does it do? Well, it, first and foremost, it holds your tools. It gives you an uh, encapsulated area, a, a distinct form factor, where you can put your tools, right? It's generally easy to transport, so you can carry all your tools around individually, or you can put them all in your toolbox and carry them around. That's kind of the second point of, of a pen testing distribution, is to have all your tools in a single place where you can lift them up and carry them from place to place as you need them. So if you're uh, going on site to perform a uh, penetration test at a, uh, at a uh, corporate uh, customer site, or you're going to a small business site, or you're doing testing uh, remote from home or from uh, doing your pen testing from Starbucks, which they, they tend not to appreciate, incidentally, um, you can move your tools from place to place easily. And that's the point behind the pen testing distributions. You can take your tools with you. You don't have to do a separate installation every time you want to use a specific tool. And then the other point of a good toolbox is you can separate your specialty tools from your other tools. So with any uh, standard uh, toolbox, or going, again going with like a uh, um, uh, mechanics toolbox analogy, <clears throat> you can put all your socket wrenches in one area of the toolbox. You can put all of your uh, screwdrivers in another section of the toolbox. You can put your more expensive tools in a locked separate area of the toolbox. And it's the same thing with penetration testing distributions. With them, the goal is to be able to separate these specialty tools, these tools that you use for penetration testing, from other tools that you may have. So what are some examples? You may have an email client that you use. You may have a, uh, a web browser that you, that you like to use with specific plugins for personal use. It, it can have a lot of bookmarks that you want to keep private, things along those lines. Uh, you may, uh, for example, have uh, iTunes running on your system. These are things that you don't want commingled with your penetration testing tools. 
you don't want uh, to be on site uh, with a uh, with a customer and uh, be doing uh, some some penetration testing for them, and uh, suddenly uh, iTunes is doing an update over their network. That's 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 uh, not professional. Doesn't look good. So the the goal here also with the pen testing distributions is it keeps your tools, your specialty tools, separate from other tools that you may use in your work. So the the, the concept of a toolbox: hold all the tools, make it easy to transport, and then uh, provide a layer of separation for your tools. That's exactly what a pen testing distribution is intended to do: provide all of those functions as a toolbox. So what's interesting about uh, pen testing distributions is you, you can have any other Linux distribution. It'll have a lot of stuff pre-installed. It'll have uh, some sort of a uh, graphical user interface. It'll have some sort of a uh, web browser installed. It's going to have uh, all, all of these different basic tools on there. It'll have a, a, a notepad of, of some type, uh, like, like LeafPad or, or something along those lines. And all of these tools are, are what you use in your day-to-day -day functions. But with a pen testing distribution, what you've got is the designer of the distribution has pulled together all of the tools that they think you'll need for performing penetration testing. So it's a, a collection of tools. And, and I kind of labeled the section collections versus selections because it's a lot easier to use a collection of tools instead of going through and selecting your own tools and building uh, what is effectively your own penetration testing distribution. Now you may need to do something along those lines. There may be some specialty tools that uh, you uh, that you need to add in. And we'll actually uh, do a little bit of that as uh, as part of this uh, as part of this class. But with the collections that are used uh, for penetration testing distributions, they've already been uh, vetted. They've already been uh, checked out to make sure that they work. Um, and typically, the person who's building the distribution or the people who are building the distribution will have tested out these tools. They'll have used them in, in real-life pen testing scenarios. They'll make sure that they, they do a good job and are able to perform like like you need them to perform. So a collection of tools, like what's included in a penetration testing distribution, can be very valuable. It saves you a lot of time. Now again, you can absolutely build your own. And a lot of the, uh, the best uh, penetration testing distributions started as someone just building their own collection of tools. But if you're going to do that, you've got a lot of work to do. First, you've got to decide uh, which Linux distribution you're going to base off of. Now, granted, you, you could start with just the kernel and start building up from there, but most people will start with something like Ubuntu, or uh, I've actually seen someone build a uh, pen testing uh, distribution on CentOS. Uh, you've got to figure out which distribution you want to start with. Um, Debian is an option. You, you've got all of these options. Each one has a slightly different way of functioning. Each one has uh, different features that are associated with the operating system itself. Each one comes with uh, packages that are pre-installed or packages that are available for it that may or may not be available for some of the others. So your, your first uh, task there is figuring out which distribution you're going to start with. And once you finally figure that out, once you select from uh, uh, all of these uh, distributions that are available, your next task is to figure out which tools you're going to use. Now, the, uh, the Kali Linux distribution uh, that uh, you installed as part of this, uh, this class has over 300 tools in it. That's a lot of installs. Um, if, if, you've, if you've done uh, package installation on, uh, on Linux before, sometimes it can go very quickly if, if you're able to, to use uh, APT and, and uh, pull a, uh, um, a package down and install it. But sometimes it's a lot more manual. You have to go through, you have to run scripts, you have to copy files, you have to change permissions, all these things. That plays a lot into um, the installation of the tools once you finally figure out which ones you're going to put in. And that's going to vary based on your focus. So if you have a distribution and uh, you, you figured out the, the distro you're going to be using, you've got to define what your purpose is behind your pen testing distribution. What do you want it to do? What do you want to use it for? So obviously pen testing, but there are a lot of specialty areas in this field. Uh, for example, you may need to do uh, wireless penetration testing. And if that's the case, you want to make sure you have all your uh, wireless tools in place. Uh, you may be focusing primarily on web applications. Uh, you'll, you're going to need a lot of different tools for that. You're going to need uh, tools that uh, perform as a proxy. You're going to need tools that are able to, uh, to test for SQL injection, uh, directory enumeration, all these different things that are specific to uh, web application testing. 
So you've got to determine which tools you're you're going to include, and that's the advantage of using a uh, pen testing distribution. That decision's been made. Those tools are already in place, and I guarantee it's a lot easier to add a tool to a pen testing distribution than build a distribution uh, from scratch and include all the stuff that you want. So along with the tools, you've got a lot of libraries. And these libraries um, are, are used by the tools. They're used by some of the scripting languages that are available on the, uh, on the system. So uh, you're going to have libraries for uh, Perl. You're going to have libraries for Python. You're going to have libraries for, uh, for Ruby, as well as application libraries. So things that are used for um, the back end functioning of the various pen testing tools. So you've got to get all those libraries uh, figured out and installed. The next part is just dealing with updates. Again, uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, the Kali Linux distribution has over 300 tools. Updating those, if, if there's a, uh, a package for it and it's uh, distributed uh, through one of the, uh, the uh, package distribution systems, updating can be pretty easy. But there are a lot of tools where an update uh, basically gets put out on GitHub, and you have to download it and uh, update it from there. There are some tools, the only updates uh, come from uh, forum posts. Uh, so you go to a forum and you download the, uh, the latest version of a tool, and uh, you have to update it. So doing these updates is very time consuming and can be very difficult. And this is one of the, uh, the places where some pen testing distributions uh, tend to fall apart, is that they'll come out with a very solid distribution to start with, and then uh, they won't be able to keep up with the updates for all the tools that are part of the distribution. Um, it, they'll determine it's way too time consuming to deal with that sort of thing, and then will fall by the wayside. Um, there are a lot of distributions out there, pen testing distributions, that were fantastic when they first came out. But within uh, six months, they were so out of date that the, uh, the tool sets uh, weren't as effective as they could have been. And then the worst part of building out your own uh, pen testing distribution is dealing with conflicts. Now, if any of you have any experience working with uh, Linux in general, you've probably run into a couple of uh, conflicts uh, between libraries that are needed for various applications or uh, applications that uh, conflict with each other just based on where they put their code or file naming uh, or directory structures, things along those lines. A lot of different conflicts. This is especially true when you're dealing with things that have a lot of dependencies. So, for example, uh, the uh, Social Engineering Toolkit, uh, which is a, a fantastic uh, penetration testing tool, it has a dependency on Metasploit uh, to perform some of its functions. If you end up with a version conflict between what uh, the uh, Social Engineering tool is expecting uh, versus what's actually installed, it can fail to function the way that you're expecting it to. So you have to maintain these, uh, all of these different um, tools and handle all the conflicts between them. And that, that can be incredibly painful uh, because what you'll find is if you have uh, two higher level tools that depend on the same lower level tool, they may not update at the same time. So now you may have a need for two different versions of the uh, tool that they depend on. So dealing with uh, conflicts is, is very difficult and something that uh, a lot of uh, penetration testing uh, distributions uh, take into account. Um, they, they try to uh, limit dependencies as much as possible, but where they can't, they try to make sure that there's at least uh, compatibility between uh, their dependency requirements. So handling the conflicts is something that uh, is very difficult and uh, another uh, good reason to use a, a solid penetration testing distribution versus uh, building out your own. So we'll move on here and start talking about uh, redacted Linux. So uh, again, um, due to the, uh, the wonderful legal system that we deal with, uh, this course was determined to be way too good and um, uh, cause uh, too much competition in the uh, in the industry of uh, uh, education. So we had to uh, rename the course, and uh, I had to rename the slide. Uh, so we're going to talk about redacted Linux, uh, which you have installed on your systems, and uh, talk about, a little bit about the uh, the history of uh, that Linux distribution, and move on from there. 
So let's talk about the history um, of what started out as uh, Backtrack Linux and then uh, finally evolved into uh, Kali Linux. This started back in uh, 2006 uh, that they uh, came out with the first beta. Um, I'm fortunate enough that I was uh, able to play with that first beta and, uh, and try it out. And uh, quite honestly, it was terrible. Uh, there were a lot of conflicts. There were a lot of missing files. It required a lot of work uh, to try to get uh, the, uh, the original backtrack uh, distribution working correctly. Installation was, was incredibly painful. But uh, the uh, the folks who uh, created it, they decided to keep on and keep pushing it, and uh, they did a great job with that. Uh, they came out with the uh, the 1.0 release in 2006 as well, and then in 2007 they came out with Backtrack 2. Uh, Backtrack 2 was one of the first that was really widely adopted in the industry. A lot of people uh, liked Backtrack 2. It had a, uh, a better collection of tools. It had um, better update capabilities. Not great, but better. Um, and they did work through uh, some of the compatibility issues uh, that they were running into in some of the, uh, the early releases. That moved on in uh, 2008 with Backtrack 3. And uh, they, they skipped 2009. I guess that's uh, when they were trying to uh, get a lot of background uh, stuff done uh, within the, uh, the company. Um, offensive security was getting off the ground, starting to get a little bit busy. And then in 2010, they decided uh, that they were going to uh, get a solid release schedule and uh, start pushing this uh, this backtrack thing because it was really working. It was uh, being effective. Uh, they, they were offering training on it and uh, it, it was starting to be uh, one of the most widely adopted uh, penetration testing distributions uh, in the industry. So in 2010 they did uh, three releases of uh, backtrack 4. And uh, they, they did kind of an unusual naming structure on that. Uh, they did like a, a Backtrack 4, R1, R2, things like that. Um, but they, they did go through uh, three full releases in uh, 2011. Uh, they uh, moved on to uh, Backtrack 5. Uh, a lot of people in the industry were, were uh, thrilled to see that. Uh, it was a, uh, an excellent, excellent uh, release. Uh, again, widely adopted. And they did uh, two releases for uh, Backtrack 5. And one thing to keep in mind as, uh, as each of these releases were done, any customization uh, that you had done uh, to, to the distribution, anything that uh, you had modified, it had to be thrown away. Um, there was no clean upgrade uh, between versions. You basically downloaded a, uh, a new image uh, if, if you wanted it to work properly. And uh, you you gave up on the uh, on the update uh, concept. So any tools that you had installed on your own, any customization that you had put in place, uh, you had to start from scratch uh, each time that the uh, the version changed. And that's not only changing between like uh, release four and release five. Uh, it was between five R one and five R two. So moving on to uh, to 2012, uh, Backtrack 5 came out uh, with two more releases. They decided to keep the uh, the same uh, major version number and move on with uh, uh, minor version releases. And then uh, last year they came out with Kali Linux, a uh, complete rename of the distribution, a a huge huge uh, rewrite. Uh, they they'd actually been working on that for uh, a couple of years uh, um, on rebuilding. Um, backtrack from the ground up and they felt it was uh, enough of a change that uh, it necessitated a, a name change. So that's kind of the uh, the history of, of how we got to uh, today uh, with this distribution. It's been around for a very long time. It's very widely accepted in the uh, in the industry. You see uh, backtrack or Kali installed all over the place. And, uh, and used quite a bit for uh, performing penetration testing. I, I think out of all of the distributions, Kali is, uh, is definitely uh, number one uh, as, far as, uh, as far as adoption.